Hello, using mid-journey images in POD designs on t-shirts and books, what's not to love? Well, there are a few things you've got to look out for. Obviously, first of all, set up an account with mid-journey and as long as you're using one of the paid accounts, which could be for as little as $10 a month, you can use their images on your POD designs, as long as they don't look like anything else that's copyrighted. And then you can put them on anything. But remember the images, although they look great in Discord, uh, when you get them into Photoshop or when you have a look at them, they're only really this size and 72 PPI or DPI. And of course we can resize or resample the images and there are some online AI tools that can do that and you can also do that in Photoshop or Affinity Photo. But what I've been experimenting with lately is to turn the images into vector. In Adobe Illustrator, you can also do this in Inkscape. Once you've, they are vector images, they can be scaled up into whatever size you want and they will be pin sharp. So this is a video showing one of the best ways to improve mid-journey images by turning them into vectors in Adobe Illustrator. So I've got a couple of prompts here that you might find useful. A vector illustration of a cat's face, t-shirt design, white background, or an illustration of a cat's face, t-shirt design, vector graphics, white background. Important to mention, obviously, t-shirt design, vector graphics, and white background. The reasons for that are, it'll be very easy to turn into a vector once you give these commands in the prompt, and it'll be very easy to put it on a transparent background, which is what you usually use for POD. Let's take this one, go into Discord. I'll go imagine, paste that, let's go cute cat's face and see what comes up so here are the four we've got i don't particularly like them i've got to be honest just looking at them in the browser uh, that one's going to be pretty easy and that one is very detailed it's nice and detailed that one uh, i just don't like that one and uh we've got a abstract thing going on which is no problem i'll do this one because it looks a little bit difficult and detailed but i'd probably go for that one because that looks easier and if you're not happy with them remember you can just go again but for the purposes of this video i'm going to upscale number two which is this one we'll go with that so i'll save this image and i'm going to open it in affinity photo so here it is and if you go in it start pixelating i'm going to bump up the contrast i'll go new adjustment layer contrast and just increase the contrast merge also going to resize it upscale it by going document resize document and put the dpi up to 300 which makes it a decent size it doesn't increase the quality by as much but it will print a little bit better if you do that uh, but it also makes the stage in illustrator where we convert it to vector it makes that stage easier and, and makes it look better as well now i'm going to go into illustrator and show you how to convert that into vector we'll go new document it's 15 by 18, which is the Merch by Amazon size. So we'll OK that. There it is. File, place and get hold of the image that we've just saved. And then click and drag. It doesn't really matter what size you put it on there. There it is. So what we want to do now is image trace. So with that selected, with the placed bitmap image selected, you go object, image trace, make but it's easier because I've got the image trace palette up here. So I'm going to go default 16 colors. The default image trace is just black and white. Sometimes it's useful. 16 colors is best when you're coming from mid journey and you've asked for vector, then you go 16 colors. So that's given us a very annoyingly black and white image. Well, it looks black and white. It's not black and white, it's RGB. But the way that uh, Illustrator has interpreted those colors makes it look black and white, which is rather disappointing. So I'll have to put some color back into it. No problem. Anyway, what we've got to do now is actually turn it into vector because it hasn't done it yet. This is still, it's not paths, it's not vector. It's just showing you a preview of what you're gonna get. To turn it into vector, you have to go expand, hit this button here, or you could go object, expand there, either way. 
There, as you can see, it's turned it into shapes and lines, and it is in vector now. So I'm just going to show you how to get rid of the background. We're going to put another layer here, and we'll put a black rectangle behind it and lock that layer and that shows you that the cat is on a white background so we'll get rid of the background we'll go to the direct selection tool click one of the corners there delete once delete again and magically the background has disappeared so now we'll just look around and you can see that we, we do have we don't have pixelation but we do have shapes and vectors that are sort of a little bit unnecessary. And that's because Illustrator has drawn shapes around some of the pixelations. But on the whole, the fur looks quite nice and it looks like it's been drawn by an artist and it looks like it's a proper vector illustration. What you could do if you wanted to is to go around and get rid of all those unnecessary elements. So you see all of these, you can just select them if you really wanted to and then turn them into the, the color of the whisker there so it doesn't look so funny. But there's so many of them in this case, I'm not gonna do that. It all depends on the image. Every time you do the, these images, it's different. One thing I want to do is get those co the colors in his eyes back. So let's have a look at the photo and they're kind of orangey. Uh, they're going from a light orange to a dark orange. So let's see if we can replicate that. We'll choose with the direct selection tool and I'm holding down shift so I choose those two and we want the light orange there and that's going to be too light of course to make it a bit brighter yellow and that it's funny there's three colors there let's go for that orange there it's still too bright let's pick another lighter orange and there I'm going to go for that one I think I've got it still too bright and it's probably too bright here, but I'm just showing you how to do it. Go back to the original image. What I could do is bring that image in and then sample the colors with the eyedropper tool and then put them into the swatches palette. But I'm just showing you quickly now something similar to what I would do. It's not too bad. It's, it's a bit stylized. Maybe we could carry on and put these bits into the orange or something like that. Another thing you can do is select the whole of the vectors. I'm gonna press Command H just to hide the edges so we can see what we're doing and, and click this recolor artwork and then edit, link them all and add the saturation. Oops, that's far too much and get a little bit more color in there. You could also brighten it up if you wanted to, but I think it's good to keep that contrast back in. And there we go. The last thing that remains to be done is to take that background color off and then we can do what we want with this because it can be as large as you want it. So you can put it on a tote bag or a t-shirt. You could put it on the side of a building on a billboard because it wouldn't lose any quality from now because it's vector. So last thing that remains to do done is to export give it a name and use artboards there and when you export that that will be a correct size and shape and resolution for a merch on demand image or any other print on demand image that you want to create and put on a product and sell online hope you enjoyed that video my name is rob cubbon i'll see you in another video